Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Kevin Mullins if you're new around here and today we're diving into Lightroom and exploring how to get the best out of Fujifilm camera profiles. If you're a Fuji shooter you already know how beautiful those film simulations look straight out of camera but did you know you can bring that magic into your Lightroom edits? I'll be showing you how to use these profiles to enhance your photos plus some top tips to make your workflow smoother and your images pop. Let's get started. First of all, this video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform I use for all of my website needs, and I'll talk about them a little bit later. Adobe includes Fujifilm profiles in Lightroom to cater to the many photographers who love Fujifilm's unique film simulations, as I do. These profiles replicate the look of classic Fujifilm films, such as Provia, Velvia, Classic Chrome, etc., providing that distinct Fujifilm color palette and tonal quality. But how do these Lightroom profiles differ from presets, I hear you say? And what happens to in-camera settings when you're shooting RAW? So let's break that down. First, it's important to understand that Lightroom profiles and presets serve very different purposes. Presets in Lightroom are just the sliders in a developed module, like exposure, highlights, shadows, contrast, clarity, etc., to give a certain look to a photograph. In contrast, profiles affect the underlying colors and tones of your image without actually moving any of these sliders. I suppose you can think of profiles as the starting point for your edit. They set the overall mood and color render of your image, I guess, at maybe a kind of more deeper level. This is particularly useful for future film photographers who want to maintain the authentic film look while keeping the flexibility to further edit their raw files. And that's the key thing, to maintain the authentic film simulation look while keeping the flexibility to further edit their raw files. So while the profiles bring over the look of the film simulations, they do not apply in-camera tweaks like shadows, highlights, color adjustments, because raw files are designed to give you complete editing freedom from scratch. This non-destructive approach ensures you're never locked into a specific style or set of settings, allowing you to make the most out of both the Fujifilm aesthetics and the power of raw editing. Okay, you've actually seen it in action, but this is how you apply the profiles. So first of all, I would always suggest that you fix any exposure, correction, highlight, shadows, etc., from your raw file. I think that's an important thing to do before you apply the profiles. But let's reset this image. So this is the original raw file from the camera. As you can see, there's no adjustments made here at all right now. I'll just step back so I can have my adjustments that I made, my exposure corrections. And then I'll go to the profiles tab. And here under camera matching, you will see all of the ones that are supported by your camera. Now, not all Fujifilm cameras support all film simulations. So you will only see what your camera supports. So in this case, classic neg is applied, but if I go back to the profile selector, you know, I've got all of them there, Acros, Acros plus yellow, Acros plus red, all of the film simulations that are in my camera are in this profile picker. So I'll just go ahead and yeah, let's just pick a turner for the time being, close that down. And then actually while we're here, you've got options to see the profile in different ways. So you can just have the list if you so wish, classic Chrome, classic neg, or you can choose large and you'll see a large thumbnail preview of what that profile is going to look like, which is quite nice actually. So let's close that down and you'll see if I put the information back on that it hasn't adjusted anything. It's still a raw file. It's a totally non-destructive workflow this. So it's a very, very neat way of doing it. And there you can see the profile that has been selected. Now, before we go on to some tips and tricks to help you use those profiles, I just want to talk about the sponsor of today's episode, Squarespace. And I've used Squarespace for a very long time now, and you can use it too. You can start a completely personalized website with the new guided design system, Squarespace Blueprint. Choose from professionally created layout and styling options to build a unique online presence from the ground up, tailored to your brand or your business and optimized for every device. You can even sell your products and services with an online store, just like I do. Whether you sell physical goods, digital content, prints or services, Squarespace has the tools you need to start selling online. You can even add appointments to your Squarespace website 
and start accepting clients if you are doing some kind of scheduling. Squarespace really is the system that I would recommend to any photographer of any size of business. Go to squarespace.com forward slash Kevin Mullins for 10% off your first website or domain hosting. Okay, let's talk about some profile tips and tricks. Number one is to create a starting preset. So here's the image again, and we're just going to go to the profile selector. And I think in this case, we'll go for classic neg. Classic neg is the one, my go-to color profile generally. So you'll know from your cameras that you have a highlights and shadows option, and those don't come in with the raw files. So we need to do something with that. But I wouldn't suggest you use highlights and shadows. I would create a bit of a tone curve, just a very subtle S curve. That's all you need. And the values I typically use are around about plus 14, 15, minus 14, 15 for lights and darks. That's similar to knocking the shadows up and dropping them down the highlights in the camera itself. I also add a little bit of clarity for all of my color images, just a little bit, 15, there or thereabouts, give it a nice little bit of a pop. Now that looks really nice and we're using the classic neg profile. So I'm going to create an preset, my own preset. I'm gonna give it its own group. I'm gonna call this Fuji Profiles. There we go. And this preset is just the starting point, remember. So I just want to include the treatment and profile, the clarity, and the tone curve. The only the three things that we've just affected. Let's switch off the grain that's, that's on from previously. Switch that off and create that. Now that gives us a very good starting point. Uh, oh, let's rename that. We'll just call this color. Start. Okay, there we go. Now, if we reset the image again, and I just have to re-straighten it because it's no good, doesn't work with my brain. And then when we hit that color start option, it'll take us straight to that. So we'll apply the profile, the clarity, and the tone curves. That gives us a brilliant starting point. Now, additionally to that, we can apply that upon import if we so wish. So if you've got lots of raw files, you don't want to go through that process for each one. Just select the folder and in the develop settings up there, choose color start and then hit import. Now, before we go on to talk about the next tip, it would be remiss of me not to talk about my own Lightroom presets and profiles, which you can purchase. And I will give you a 20% discount with the code YT24. I have all kinds of options, Film Edition 3, Silver Palette, etc. Go to my website and you can have a look. So just do a quick edit with one of these. We'll just reset it. And this is an option for you if you just want to, you know, buy some presets. Help me out. So in this case, I think I'm going to go for my cinematic film preset, which I love straight away. That looks great. And yeah, let's just close that up. And that's applied my Elite Chrome profile. I'm going to go down to the film utilities, which come with all of my presets. I'm going to hit that film look. which gives it a nice little filmic look. And you can use these sliders at the top for all of my utilities and presets to just reduce the, the amount of them. I also include AI utilities in most of the presets. And in this case, we're going to do background darken, which will make it too dark, but we'll bring it down quite substantially just to taste. That looks really nice. I like that. So that's using the cinematic color preset from Film Edition 3 Color. Now, all of my presets have profiles as well as prefets, as well as presets, I should say. You can see some of them there. But head over to my website, YT24 is your code for 20% off all of my presets. All right, back to the tips. And this one is tip number two organize your favorites. Now, in the panel, the profiles panel, you might find yourself often choosing the same profile, let's just say across in this case. And you'll notice in the top right-hand side is a little star, add to favorites. Hard to see, but it is there. And what that actually does is move it into the favorites collection at the top of the profiles panel. There you go, you can see it there. If you change it to the list, you can see everything that's in there, a bit easier, and you can decide which ones you want to keep in there. You know, you might want to just remove all of the standard Adobe ones if you never use them. Just click off the star, 
that just leaves you then with camera across. And if you go down and you can just select, you know, maybe you want to have Velvia and Vivid there as quick access. There they are, all in there. And the favorites, we just have the two now, Velvia, Vivid and Acros. Very easy way to organize your profiles. All right, and the final tip is how to compare the profiles using virtual copies and the survey mode. So within Lightroom itself, uh, the best thing to do is create virtual copy. Let's just do four for the time being. Maybe I'm interested in four black and white profiles to see what they look like next to each other. I'll just create four virtual copies there. Then for each one, I'll select one of the profiles. Uh, as I said, I'm just going to go for four black and white ones. Let's do across yellow there. We'll do monochrome and we will do monochrome green and maybe monochrome yellow. Why not? And the next thing you'll need to do to see these all together is go to the library module, go back to the library module. And you'll see survey mode just there in the bottom. Now, as it stands, it will just show one image. But if you do Command A or Control A on your computer to select all of the images, you'll see them all together. And that's it. Until next time, goodbye.